So let's bring in Hollywood divorce attorney David Glass for more on this. David, people going through divorces are going through some of the hardest times of their lives, and a lot of what they're going through is emotional. And in any divorce, there's a huge sense of loss, and the loss of relationship, of money, some friends. We're back with another episode of the Hourglass Podcast, where family law and psychology intersect. I'm your host, David Glass, a certified family law specialist, former psychologist, and author of Moving On, Redesigning Your Emotional, Financial, and Social Life After Divorce. We're here to help those going through a breakup or divorce find ways to make the trauma of it all a little bit easier to deal with, more understandable, smoother, and to help them find motivation and inspiration to move on. How? By continuing to share advice and insights from a variety of experts, specialists who are regarded as the best in their respective fields. Today, more on gaslighting. What is it? It's when a person plays such havoc with your mind that over time, you doubt everything and everyone. A gaslighter's key goal is to undermine you in pretty much every way. A gaslighter wants to control another person. Today, we have someone who knows all about mind games, Dr. Mark Goulston. He's a former UCLA professor of psychiatry, FBI and police hostage negotiation trainer, author or co-author of nine books, Just Listen, becoming the top book on listening in the world. He's also the host of a very popular podcast, on which I was a recent guest, My Wake Up Call, where he talks to other authors about their books. We're gonna pick his brain now to find out what goes on inside the mind of a gaslighter and how the victim of one processes this type of psychological abuse. This might sound like an out there question, but what goes on inside the mind of a gaslighter? I'm glad you asked that. I have a radio show on UK Health Radio called Hurt Less Live More. And what goes on in the mind of a gaslighter is the inability to hurt at all. So they can't endure hurt and mm -hmm. they will do whatever they can to avoid being hurt. And when they find vulnerable people that they can manipulate, not only can they avoid hurt, uh, but they can inflict hurt. And sadly, a number of gaslighters you know, have other uh, diagnoses like, uh, like psychopath, narcissist, and they often take delight in uh, taking advantage of people. Uh, there's a quote I once heard, people who, can take people who can't take advantage of opportunity take advantage of people. Interesting. And a lot of gaslighters, because if you can take advantage of opportunity, you just take advantage of opportunity, you know, and the world beats a path to your door. But a lot of these gaslighters, for whatever reason, they're not able to do that, but they've discovered that if they can take advantage of other people, you know, maybe they can have some fun and mm -hmm. maybe they can get those people to do what they want them to do. And so for, for a gaslighter, and I know that it, that's not a, a diagnosis and we're just using it as a description to someone who inflicts this type of abuse on someone else, but is this a genetic or neurological situation or is this something that someone acquires through their own experiences? You know, I'm a psychiatrist, and almost everything that goes on has a biological, psychological, and social component. Right. So there is nurture is the social component, nature is the biological, and psychological is kind of what you do in your head about those things. And a lot of times what they, they've seen this with a parent. They've seen one parent take advantage of another. They've learned some of those habits. There are certain... Um, there are certain cultures where it seems to be part of it. Middle Eastern cultures, it seems like there's a lot of gaslighting back and back and forth. Mm -hmm. And and so it, it can be all of those things. Interesting. And so there are all sorts of pathological exes, ex-husbands, ex-wives out there. Um, are gaslighters considered to be some of the more dangerous sorts of exes out there, or does it really depend on the case? It depends on the case, and and by dangerous, you know, are we talking that they will uh, not stop it anywhere until they inflict harm or damage on the other person? Those are the dangerous people. Right. Uh, whereas there are other people that are just cunning and manipulative and will do whatever they can to sort of get their way. And so what about the victim of gaslighting? What happens to their brain 
uh, as they're subjected to this abuse over a period of time. Well, what happens is you start to doubt yourself because gaslighters, they lie, they manipulate, they uh, uh, demonstrate compassion that's very slick and self-serving. And so you begin to doubt yourself and think there's something wrong with you. You know, something that I would advise your viewers to do is watch the movie Gaslight. And I think I'll share a little bit of it because if you watch that, it will tell you everything you need to know about gaslighting and being gaslit. And in the movie, there are three main actors. There's Charles Boyer, there's Ingrid Bergman, and there's the hero, Joseph Cotton. And Ingrid Bergman plays this person who is, has a lot of you know neuroses and, mm -hmm. and she doubts herself. And Charles Boyer marries her because years before, he uh, uh, invaded the flat that they're going to live in, and the jewels were hidden up in the attic. Mm -hmm. So his main reason for marrying her was to get those jewels, and they call it gaslight, <laughs> right. because in those days, those flats were lit by gaslight lamps, and so what would happen is every night he would go up, and he'd turn the lights on, so he's searching for the jewels, and the lights would go off down below, and, and, and she would say, geez, I don't know what's going on. The lights are going off. Mm -hmm. And he would say, oh, it's, you need to rest. You just have to, uh, you know, you, you, uh, you're too stressed. And so he was always uh, trying to soothe her. Mm -hmm. And she was doubting whatever was happening. And, and the hero is a fellow named Joseph Cotton. And he adds things up. And it seems like nothing seems to be making sense. And why this is important is because if you're someone who's being gaslit, one of the best things you can do is check with your friends. Ask them, what do you think? Mm -hmm. You know, and be very clear with them. Because you're gonna, there are people in your life who want the best for you. And they will point out to you, this, do, this doesn't add up. Mm -hmm. And uh, also an, an important thing to do if you're being gaslit is don't ever focus on their words. Don't trust their words at all. Mm -hmm. Focus on their actions because you might start to see things that just don't make sense. Right, and so, so gaslighters are especially good with their words mm -hmm. and, and with their affect and convincing their victims that they don't know what they're talking about or they're too anxious or they're too sensitive or that what they're talking about just isn't real. But, but tell me more about their actions. What kind of actions should someone be looking for? Well, their actions are, are, are inconsistent. Their actions are they, uh, they'll push away any kind of uh, responsibility or owning up to anything. Uh, if you confront them, uh, they'll often get really angry. And if you just question them, they'll get angry. Uh, uh, you know, something that might be of interest to your viewers and you is I was gaslighted a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I won't go into the details, but I was gaslighted by an assistant. And I'm very sympathetic. I'm a psychiatrist right. and all these things. And, and something, some things just weren't adding up. And then uh, I had rented a suite and other... Uh, uh, and then one of the other suite mates said, you know, that person has been doing things to hurt your name. Hmm. And I didn't want to believe it because this person was brilliant. Right. You know, and, uh, and then what happened is uh, one day someone uh, knifed my car, wow. cut my name off the door, and I thought, look, I'm a psychiatrist. I see people who have issues, and I thought it was an sure. ex-patient. And then everything added up to that. And then here's something I thought, uh, if this, this person knows where I live, mm -hmm. uh, if I get a restraining order, you know, it's, it's going to be mincemeat. So here's something I realized, at least in this particular case, yeah. that if they had been doing this to me, they'd been doing it all their life. Right. Just like you can't be a little bit pregnant, you can't be a little bit of a gaslighter. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, knowing that, because all I wanted to do was get this person out of my life. Right. 
And so there was a, a, a day, and this was going to be the crisis day, and I told my wife to come in and I say, you know, you know stay in my office in case things uh, escalate. Yeah. And so I met with this person and I said, uh, it's, it's come to my attention that you've been doing some things that are harmful to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and she got, this person got all red in the face and, uh, and she said, well, who told you what? But, the, but I said, there's more than a few people. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to tell you who they are. Uh, and also what I realized is um, you've been hiding things for a long time. And I did a search for what you've been hiding for years. Uh, And I hadn't done a search, but I was so clear that this has happened. Right. And I said, you didn't do a very good job of hiding things. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, and this person got very red in the face and said, you're bluffing. I said, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. Mm Mm-hmm. But if you have something to hide, and I'm not going to tell you what it is, uh, you have a lot to fear. And all I want is for you to be out of my life mm-hmm. uh, in two hours. Uh, and if you do anything to hurt my reputation, anybody else that I care about, uh, I'm not vindictive, but I will use everything I found. And I mean everything and I will expose you. But all I want is for you to go, Mm -hmm. bye-bye. And Well, you're bluffing. If I'm bluffing, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Uh, But out of here in two hours. And then I go back uh, to my room, my wife's there, and I start hyperventilating. (laughs) Behind behind closed doors. And and I hear a window. No, I hear pictures breaking because, you know, I owned all the furniture, or I leased it. But, you know, everything that was hers, she just smashed. And and she said, I can't be out of here in two hours. I said, I'm aware that you have a few henchmen in your life. You can be out of here in two hours. Right. You know, and then within two hours, she was gone. Amazing. And never heard from her. And the point is, uh, given the internet and everything, if this person came back into my life, I would do a search and I would uncover all kinds of things. But I just thought that would be an interesting anecdote for you. Oh, yeah, very interesting. And uh, and for our viewers, that a preeminent psychiatrist can have this come into their life and they were able to... I don't know if the word is fool you, they were able to get something over on you at least for a short amount of time Mm -hmm. before you started questioning it. Oh, absolutely. Well, because we're sympathetic. You know, I I, I always be sympathetic with people helping me if they were stressed out. I would be too understanding. Uh, I wasn't that great at holding them accountable. I was better at letting them off the hook. Uh, But uh, I'm, I'm not as foolish as I was then. All right. And in the end, uh, you, 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 you brought the, the fear factor down on them, mm-hmm. and that's, got, that's what got rid of her. Yeah, yeah. Now, let me ask you, if, if someone who's a gaslighter came to the realization they didn't want to be that type of person anymore, and you can tell me whether that's even possible, but if they wanted to get help, is there a course of treatment they could go through? Yeah, I think people that specialize, therapists who specialize in severe personality disorders. And so those are the borderline personalities. These are very destructive, impulsive people, uh, but basically good people, narcissistic people, psychopathic people. But, you know, there's a saying, people don't do what's important to them. They do what they care enough about. Mm -hmm. It's important for me to diet and exercise. I don't care enough about it to do the greatest job. Right. So what is it that would cause them to care enough? And I guess if you're a dyed-in-the-wool sociopath, having your son die from an overdose may not get through to you. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that are just so primal that when it happens, uh, something clicks in you and you feel, i got to fix this. And then I guess the question becomes, how long does that feeling stay with them? Or do they rubber band right back to the the way they used to act. Well, of of course, there's a great tendency to rubber band back to the way they were. 
But but if they can if they can start to get a taste of turning a corner, mm -hmm. and what I would do, I'm a retired therapist now, is I, is I would get them to start noticing the difference in way uh, the way uh, people are around them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I have this new radio show on UK Health Radio, Hurt Less, Live More. Mm -hmm. And on one of the shows, I, I said, here's, here's my definition of a good person. And on our pre premiere show, I talked about Queen Elizabeth II mm -hmm. being a good person. A good person is someone who is willing to hurt more so that the people they love and who are under their charge hurt less. Mm-hmm. And I went off on a tangent on this show. I said there were, there were a number of people in the monarchy who just weren't able to hurt more. Right, right. <laughs> and so they would act out in order to hurt less, and it created all kinds of havoc. Yeah. Amazing, amazing insight. Uh, and, uh, and I particularly like that you shared your story uh, about a gaslighter with us. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Dr. Kuster. Thanks for having me. I understand how hard it is to get out from under someone who is trying to mess with your mind. I hear stories about this all day long in my line of work. If you're being gaslit, move away from that partner who is playing havoc with your mind. Now as you know, I like to close out each episode with song lyrics. In this Kelly Clarkson song, Don't Waste Your Time, she seems to finally realize the relationship is hopeless and should finally end. The lyric seems to suggest that she's finally walking away. If you're in an abusive relationship with a gaslighter, get out. Don't waste your time. Odds are your partner is never going to change, and I'm betting you don't want to lose any more of your precious time trying to make that happen. Time. Well, we only have so much of it.